Hi everybody, welcome to This Week in Medicine, October 11th, 2021. Thanks for tuning back in again. Again, this is brought to you by the Foxhall Foundation. We have a wellness center in Chevy Chase. We have a stroke prevention program based on our book. And we have an excellent uh, karate and wellness instructor. We have classes in uh, karate and adult movement and yoga classes. Classes at the Wellness Center include Yoga with Tala. Her classes are Monday and Friday at 7.30 and Saturday at 8, and we are working on starting a free class once a month. We'll give you times and uh, days soon. And the other thing we have is uh, low impact, or I guess you could call it karate movement for people 50 and older. Trust me, this is not black belt karate. We do this uh, very uh, accommodating level. We'll work with whatever level of fitness or ability you have. Uh, Monday and Friday from 12 to 1, I believe also we're doing this on Wednesdays. What stressed you out this week? Uh, for us, uh, it was forgetting a vaccine card, which we have stopped doing. So we left the house and three of us had our vaccine cards. One didn't, thankfully. We were only about 100 feet away from the house, turned around, went back, got the vaccine card because we went to see Jan Karski at Shakespeare Theater and they were definitely carding everyone. It gives new meaning to being carded and somebody was turned away from Shakespeare's Theater when we saw Jan Karski. So make sure you take your vaccine card with you or have it on your cell phone because truly if you want to get out and experience life, you need your vaccine card. Jan Karski stressed me out, but in a totally different way. Jan Karski, as many of you know, is a professor at Georgetown, uh, but he was also one of the first people to expose what was happening in Poland uh, with the Nazi invasion and what was happening to Polish Jews. So this was an excellent play, a one-man show. Um, it was wonderful to see, but I have to say, most of the people there were over 50 years old. We need to make sure the next generation knows about Jan Karski. So that didn't stress me out, but uh, maybe stressed me out in different ways. J&J &J second shot, we should be hearing about very soon. Halloween looks like it's on in our area. So uh, Halloween guidelines are already out, at least for my neighborhood, hopefully for yours. It looks like Halloween is on, trick-or-treating will start. Air travel safety is still a problem. Um, I th still think it's best to, of course, be vaccinated, have your N95 mask or KN95 mask. Booster confusion is hopefully clearing up in the next four weeks, so I don't think there'll be much more confusion. How to interact with the unvaccinated? I think it really depends on where you live. Here, we really don't have many unvaccinated people, so it's a little easier, but if you're out in states that have high rates of uh, lack of vaccination, like Ohio, uh, West Virginia, uh, I think it's definitely more difficult to know. Vaccine for kids, coming up very soon too. We'll approach that in the next couple of slides. Again, wanted to remind you just how effective your vaccines are. If you have the Moderna vaccine, you're fairly well protected with just two shots, not the booster, just two shots against hospitalization. Pfizer uh, patients have definitely been turning up to get their booster. I had 27 announcements on my Epic screen this morning, which means those were people who over the weekend got their Pfizer booster dose, and that is reported to me through the Hopkins computer because it incorporates data from the local pharmacies. So a lot of people got their Pfizer booster over the past four days. J&J &J boosters will be coming soon. Again, these vaccines are amazing. Remember the flu shot at its best usually has a 60% rate of success. So we're well over that. Again, the uh, ER rate, urgent care visit rate, if you get a Delta infection, still very, very well protected. The recommendations are again, don't mix your vaccines. You should get vaccinated if you're over 65 and got a Pfizer booster series, the first two. Uh, if you're in a long-term care facility or if you have underlying medical conditions, including being overweight, uh, diabetes, heart disease, lung disease. And then of course you may get vaccinated if you have underlying medical conditions or are younger or if you work in a setting um, like a teacher or a doctor. Booster confusion, uh, you can get a booster if you got Pfizer. J&J, &J, not yet, but probably in the next four weeks. Moderna. Maybe not, or possibly limited in scope, meaning that maybe just people over 65 because this vaccine is so effective. And please remember it's a 50% dose that Moderna is uh, seeking for FDA and CDC approval, not 100%. We had more than a few patients this week go to the emergency room with side effects from a 100% Moderna booster. It's a strong shot. So if you are not waiting for CDC and FDA approval of the 50% Moderna, 
be prepared if you get the 100%, it might really give you some significant side effects. There's some data from Canada, very interesting, on delaying boosters. They did their booster shots, or actually shot number one and two, four months apart. So we're not even talking about a third booster. We're talking about shots one and two. They separated them by four months. This data has not been peer reviewed yet. So that means this is hot off the presses. Um, uh, the infectious disease community and virology community has not reviewed this data, but at least in Canada, reported by the CBC News, it looks like their vaccination may have been more effective by delaying the first and second shot. They're not even recommending no evidence for boosters in the general population yet. So if you live in Canada, they're not being as aggressive with booster shots for Pfizer and Moderna and J&J &J as we are. Um, again, this is not peer reviewed data. It has not been published yet, but there's a suggestion that they had excellent protection by separating their shots by four months. It's, it's very interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on this. So the Moderna and J&J &J booster news, Reuters reported the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, the ACIP, we're probably all learning these letters now. ACIP are, is the group that gives us our flu shot recommendations, our Pneumovax vaccine recommendations, and of course, recommendations on our COVID vaccines. They will meet October 20th and 21st to review the boosters, the Moderna and the J&J boosters. So you can write that on your calendar. The FDA actually meets this week. So this Thursday and this Friday, they will be meeting on the Moderna booster and the J&J booster to review the data just like they did with the Pfizer booster. October 22nd then could be your date to get your J&J &J and Moderna booster. If it's approved by the CDC Advisory Committee, it'll be very similar to what Rochelle Walensky did when she approved the Pfizer booster. Remember, sometime midnight, one o'clock in the morning, she decided that we should extend the Pfizer vaccine, not just to people at risk, but those in risky uh, occupations like doctors and teachers. We'll see what she has to say, but the next day after the advisory committee meets could be the day that she says, okay, let's go with that recommendation from FDA and CDC and go ahead and get your J&J &J Moderna booster. So October 22nd is just two weeks away. What happened with the 100% booster? Well, I alluded to that or was quite explicit about that two slides ago. What happened was that people who got the 100% Moderna booster got pretty sick. Of course they're protected, um, but their immune response was strong enough to make them feel really ill. Pfizer for Kids is still in the news. Uh, we talked about this last week. The EUA, meaning the Emergency Use Authorization, has been submitted to FDA, and here's the tweet from Pfizer. Pfizer tweeted, we and BioNTech Group officially submitted our request to the FDA for emergency use. You can't see the date too well on here, but it was October 7th. So that was last week. They submitted emergency use authorization appeal. Uh, the meeting is supposed to be October 26th. So you can write all these dates on your calendar. Uh, so the CDC might be able to meet November 2nd and 3rd, but we have to have available the dose that was um, applied for, which is 10 micrograms, which is a third of the adult dose. So we need a third of the adult dose. The decision may be November 2nd and 3rd. The safety and the efficacy is similar to the age group of 16 to 25, so we don't have to look for new side effects. There were two myocarditis studies. I think many of us know that there was a risk of heart inflammation, which is what myocarditis is, related to vaccinations in young people predominantly males. There were some women who got this, but this was mostly a male event and it happened in young people. The two studies said that one was a four in 100,000 rate. The other study said 15 out of 100,000 and it was in this age group of 16 to 19. But really one study said this was 76% were mild cases, 95% mild cases in the other. So as you are thinking about, should I vaccinate my child five to 11 years old? That's what the application is for a five to 11 year old. Uh, what is my risk of my child getting myocarditis? It's low and it should be a mild case. All right, moving on from COVID, artificial sweeteners in the gut microbiome. So these are the bacteria that live in our colon that we're very focused on lately. Uh, there was a study from Ben Gurion University about uh, artificial sweeteners, aspartame, which is NutraSweet or equal, saccharin, which is sweet and low, and Splenda, sucralose, that these uh, artificial sweeteners in your gut may interrupt gut bacteria communication. So the numbers of the bacteria may be the same, but apparently this concept of gut bacteria communication is essential to the way our gut protects us 
from other infections and invaders. It's an interesting study, came out this week. We'll see uh, if we get more information on this, but I thought it was uh, something to think about. Maybe we should just limit our real sweetener intake, limit our sugar and honey intake, uh, and avoid some of these, especially perhaps saccharin, which also may have some uh, carcinogenic effects. Tony's tip of the week. Well, Tony's not giving you a tip this week. He's on vacation. As Eliza says, take a break, Hamilton. But if you do take a break, take your vaccine card with you because you might not be served without it. So Tony has no tip this week. I think his tip would be go on vacation. Fast pitch. Again, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's not enough to be aware. You actually have to get your mammogram. Uh, mammograms have been a little bit behind because there was a backlog due to COVID, but it's still a good idea to schedule. Uh, at least get your blood work. If you can't get a physical, just call us. Uh, we have a Quest lab in the office. You can come in and get your blood work anytime from usually 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Fridays till 3 p.m. Uh, do, do not trust your online pharmacy on your refill requests. We had this happen at least 10 times today. If you don't think that your prescription has been filled yet or you have no confirmation, you can always call your pharmacy or just call us and see if it was done. Also, as we approach Moderna and J&J boosters, which may happen sometime in the next two to four weeks, yes, you can get your flu shot at the same time. But then think about it. If you're getting a third shot of Moderna and we expect you to have some side effects with that or a third shot of Pfizer and you didn't have side effects with the first or second, you might with the third. So do you really want to suffer all those side effects from a flu shot and a COVID vaccine at the same time? Some people want to be one and done. So yes, they might. Um, but some people also might want to separate their potential side effects. Again, building a firm foundation of health. Here's your pyramid of prevention. Make sure you get all your immunizations because especially if you don't get the COVID vaccine, it tips over your whole pyramid. And that's all we have to say for today. If you have any questions or comments, certainly let me know. And thank you for watching.